nice to see you finally, Mr. My Mr. Pleasure, my pleasure, my pleasure. You are my friend of so many years, and I'm Zambia. It's easier to go to America sometimes than to travel. <laughs> It's good that you know what I go through when, I, when I'm coming to Nigeria. And I, I hop in and out of Nigeria, like flying from Lagos to Abuja daily. Uh, so it's good to see what I go through. I know, I know. No, but trust me, I'm, I'm so proud of you, sir. Oh, and thank you. It was my pleasure. It was a pleasure yeah, hosting you. We are going to play you a music. You deserve it. Please. If you can have someone to get your drinks next to you, whatever you drink at this time, your own juice, your so that oh, I it's, know your it's food. coffee. It's coffee. I've just broken my fast. <laughs> coffee. I know. I know. So I'll come back in a minute. Let's have you so undo at your 30th celebration in January. You brought one of Africa's greatest, you see, Undu, and then so we'll start by playing. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, fantastic, fantastic. Thank fantastic. you so much, thank you so much. You've got me on, huh? Oh, yeah, so I needed to, to calm you down, you know. Thank you okay. so much. Yeah, someone is saying on the screen that your tough estate is the biggest in Port Harcourt. We'll get to that. I don't want us to, <laughs> you know. Uh, let me start by, by saying I met you about 20 years ago. When I came to the Gambia with my friends, Kule Bakari, Me Yoaki Kwenu, Shegun Fatoye, my cousin, uh, John Fashanu, the footballer. And you were so kind to us. You didn't really know much about us. Aisha Tijanko spoke to you and you released your property. I remember we came with some fashion cool of them and you gave us very comfortable accommodation. Uh, I also remember that when we were launching, you made yourself available to us. I will forget you. I won't forget Alhaji Ahmadu Samba. And I remember Samuel Sa was still in the Gambia. And yeah. So I made yeah. very, very good friends. Very, very yeah. good friends. They are still good friends today. Uh, 30 years you've been in this business. What drives you? Well, thank you very much, um, uh, Chief. Um, first, let me thank you for, for this honor. It's an honor to, you know, connect all the way with me in Gambia. I mean, there are close to 200 million Nigerians. And, you know, very affluent, very successful Nigerians in all walks of life. And you started this, and I mean, you were so kind, you know, to honor me by, by you know, granting me this interview. So let me first thank you for doing that. I mean, you've shown that you are a brother. You, you know, left everything that you were doing. You didn't send me a bill <clears throat> to come and celebrate with me um, when I celebrated 30. And I'm sorry again for driving on that bad taxi from the airport. But you came in and you showed me you were a brother. So let me first, you know, thank you from the bottom of my heart. You, you have proven to be truly African. Thank but you. I'm coming back to your, to your question. I mean, my passion drives me. I mean, I'm a man of passion. I mean, I, I, I love um, uh, development. I love anything that is African. So um, uh, for my development that I have done for the past 30 years, 
I mean, I'm just driven by my passion. It is something I love, you know, and I enjoy it and I'm fulfilled when I do it. So I think in short, that's the answer for really for development. Can you tell us a bit about your background growing up in the Gambia? My, my, my background, I mean, uh, I started very, very, very young. I mean, I, I, I left school, you know, some, 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 some 45 years ago. Wow. You know, you know, and um, I was so stubborn and, and uh, really determined on what I wanted to do. And um, um, I, I just ventured into, into construction. So from my high school, I didn't go to uni. I didn't pursue to my higher education. But I just had this passion for, for anything technical, working with my hands. So and it was way back in 1975. Um, you know, I discovered my, my skills at a very young age. So, so I started by working with international construction firms. And then I worked for about 15 years from one firm to the other. And then I, I, I started my own business, you know, some 30 years ago. Wow. And then, so when you started, what was it like at the beginning? Well, I mean, like every business that you start, there were challenges, you know, but I was always ready for the challenge. Because, you know, in, in Africa, I mean, especially, I mean, for a country like ours, when I started to deliver... And up to now, that is also an issue. I mean, uh, we don't believe in ourselves. But to a certain extent also, um, uh, we have some Africans who don't come out with good integrity. So it was difficult for people to trust me, you know, to trust me with their money to, to build their houses or do a contract with them. So it was a challenge, but I had to prove them wrong by making sure so that, look, I can do what any international firm can do. Delacy terms, it was about 34,000 Delacy's, you know, and, and maybe those days, yes, I could say about maybe $2,000. That's what it was worth. So at what stage did you decide to go into uh, building estates and all that? Affordable well, home, to call it. Well, let, let me tell you what happened. I went to the U.S. I, I went to the U.S., um, 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 uh, in in 1990, I, I think it was about um, 1996 or so, 1997. You know, on a, on a program. Yeah, yeah. So, so yes, I started. Actually, what happened was I was on a World Bank program uh, in Washington, and um, uh, uh, together with my uh, the ambassador of the Gambia, you know, in Washington, then, you know told me that, look, we have so many Gambians who are here who struggle by sending money back home. And, and you know, you know the story, the way it goes. And they're never happy with, with the project. So he says, look, why don't you start doing something for them? But really, that's where it was born. And those days, I found a Gambian who was working for Nations Bank. Nations Bank is today Bank of America. And, you know, it's not the, the I mean, the, what they do today with KYC and all this stuff. But within within 48 hours, I had opened an, an account. You know, I walked into a branch, an account was open. And that is how it started. So I came back home, you know, engaged the government, you know, to give me a parcel of land as an investor. So I started and, you know, my first project was about 200 units. You know, but mainly, yeah, 200 units, but mainly targeting diasporans, you know, Gambians who are living abroad. You know, and, and uh, you know, they, they had so many challenges, you know, buying houses or sending money home that um, it just went wild. And I, I sold everything within, I think, six months. Everything was sold out. And that's where it started. Fantastic. And then your affordable homes. Can you talk to yeah. us about that? Actually, yeah, Dr. Bucky... Is one of our biggest uh, property developers in Nigeria. She's on the platform. She said, I should let you know that you have very great standards. I mean, that's a good compliment. Oh, thank you very much. That's a good compliment. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah, so my, my, my first um, uh, affordable home was at about $15,000, you know, for a two-bedroom house which is about 75 square meters, you know. But nicely done. It's still here when you drive from the airport, you know, on the Combo Coastal Road, if you know the Gambia. 
you know, we built about 210 units there. And um, uh, yeah, that's where it started. We, we, that's where we started in about, about 1998. And now you've built up to how many homes in the Gambia? In the Gambia, I think we are, we will say roughly about two, three thousand units have been built. You have to remember that Gambia, Gambia, we only have a population of two, two million, huh? We are about the size of VI. So, <laughs> so, so that's, that's how small we are. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've built, I think, about 2,000 units to date. So most of your developments, are they in Banjul or they're on the outskirts? They're in the outskirts. I mean, if you know Gambia, I mean, most um, residential properties are on the coast, you know, within around the tourism development area. As you know, you know, we do very well in tourism. So so most of us um, live around this area, which is about, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes drive to Banjul. Banjul is an administrative capital and it's an island, so you can expand. So um, um, most of the development, you know, happens outside of Banjul. Okay. Have you done anything in the area of tourism? Yeah, I used to own a hotel um, um, uh, called Taft Bell way back in 1995. It was about 100 rooms. You know, then I do service departments, you know, which we still do. That's what one of my kids do run it. So, yes, I'm a tourism development. If you're in the Gambia, you cannot but, you know, be involved in tourism development because that's where most of our bread and butter is. Outside the Gambia, which was the first country you approached? Senegal was the first because it's obvious. I mean, we are surrounded by Senegal. You know, then I went to Mali, you know, um, uh, and then just went from one country to the other. But let me tell you, something my eyes were always on nigeria always from day one from day one i realized that look if i want to succeed as a developer i need to get into the nigerian market and when you came to nigeria why did you go to portacourt why didn't you stay in lagos uh, let me tell you what happened actually i mean i was introduced by um, uh, um, uh, somebody who worked in the federal government in abuja because i got introduced into Nigeria by somebody who works for the World Bank. So I went to the federal government, somebody, um, you know, in the federal government, and he said, you know what, <clears throat> I think um, uh, Rivers, they are ready for this because they have the Greater Port Harcourt project, and I would like to introduce you to the governor. So I was introduced to Rotimi Amici then, you know, and that's why I went into Port Harcourt. And so when you met Rotimi Amechi, did you now strike a deal and you were able to get the land and you? Yeah, when I, when I, when I came in, obviously, I, I, we were negotiating on Greater Port Harcourt, but it was a bit slow after the due diligence was done because he, he sent the director of uh, public-private partnership, one Anita, Anita, Anita Lazwa, you know, with, with the team. So they traveled to the Gambia to come and see what I, what I was doing because, you know, Brochures were not enough. So he thought, look, you know, let them go there and see what this guy, you know, can do. I mean, is it true that he can do all this? So they came in, and when they were satisfied, I joined them on the same flight to go back to Port Harcourt. So um, uh, it's a PPP, a public-private partnership. We negotiated, and then I will raise the finance and perform. So, so we negotiated you know, and uh, agreed, signed off, and then I hit the ground. Yes, yes, that was the condition I gave, that look, give me the land. Once you give me the land, you know, I will raise the finance and develop, and then we'll sell out. Fantastic. And I remember uh, one of the things that impressed me the most was the continuity after Amici left. So how were you able to deal with the next government? Well, the thing is, what everything we did with Amateur was very transparent. And these are lessons to learn, you know, when you are in business in Africa. I mean, don't ever, don't ever cut corners. Make sure that whatever you, what I did was to make sure first I registered a company and I only own 50% of the business. I don't own the business 100%. Then I look for very reputable um, uh, Nigerians who wanted to come on board. So they came on board, and we 
negotiated and everything was done properly. So the transition when MHNF, we had a very smooth transition with Governor Wiki. And up to now, we have a very smooth relationship. But the reason is because nothing was done under the carpet. Everything was done very transparent. You know, so we had a very smooth transition. I am still in Port Harcourt. You know, since Amitya left, it's about, what, seven years now. But, you know, Port Harcourt is more like my, my second or third home. Hmm. Fantastic. Are you able to tell us some of your friends or partners in Nigeria? Yes, I mean, my chairman is uh, Engineer Basil Omiyi. Engineer Basil Omiyi is the chairman of CAF Nigeria Homes. And then um, uh, Engineer um, um, Mutiu Sumunu also, who's the chairman of of um, um, of um, uh, Julius Baja. Julius Baja, yes. Yeah, yeah. He is also a director. Okay. And then, and then I, I have Mr. T.C. Osanakpo, you know, who is based in Rivers, a lawyer, a top lawyer. He's an SAN. He's also a director. And and then also I have um, 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 Mahmoud Tuku. Mahmoud also is a long time friend of mine. He's also a director. Yeah. So those are my four. Those are my four Nigerian directors. Fantastic. And about how many homes have you built so far in Podako? We are almost doing a thousand two hundred. You know, we are still on our first project. Um, uh, that's the total, and we think we will exit. You know, before the end of the year. If we if if we go post COVID, huh? COVID is disturbing us now. And there uh, was the price range of an average property in naira terms. Let's let's keep it naira. When we first started, we started with about 12, 12 million naira for a two bedroom, you know, and a three bedroom was 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 about nineteen million naira. But obviously, as you know, this was about some seven years ago since we started. You know, it appreciates in value. So now those two bedrooms are selling for um, about um, maybe 20 million or so. Um, and then the three bedrooms are selling about 25 to 27. But we are not the ones selling it. It's the secondary market, you know, because we ran out a long time ago. But there's value and people are, you know, they've, they're, they're, they're selling in the secondary market. You run out already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we sold out. All we are doing now, we're building a shopping mall there. We're finishing it up. Uh, we also have a golf course within the estate. So we're finishing up the golf the, the, the golf course. And then there's a, some little bit of perimeter fencing. Perimeter, perimeter fencing we are doing, you know, um, um, around the water side because it's waterfront. So we just have some very few services to complete. But in terms of buildings, we ran out a long time ago. Wow. Wow. So where is your location in Patakot? We're, we're in Trans Samadhi. You know, um, uh, there's a new bridge um, uh, that connects Trans Samadhi and Woji. So if I want to buy a home from you now in Patakot, how long do I have to wait? Well, we can find in the, in the, in the secondary market. You know, people no, are... People are the direct mar market. The direct market, no, we don't have any. We don't have any, you know, but we are still are building new ones. No, we're not building new ones for now. We're, we're, we're not building new ones for now. Uh, I mean, one of the things that I do in my brand, I hardly do multi estates because I'm so passionate with what I do. If I, I go on a site, you know, I want to make sure that I deliver everything. And you know, I, I live in the estate, and I can tell you, um, uh, Chief. About maybe eighty percent of my clients, I know them by their names. You know, I, I I'm very passionate about what I do. So you can imagine, as the developer, I live in the estate. I hang out in the clubhouse. People can walk to me. They have a problem. They can call me up. You know, and that's my brand. I mean, I give attention and details to my clients. So I see. Uh, well. If you say you live in the estate and you do all that, that, that must be tiring. Do you deal in maintenance as well? Go into facilities management. When we develop our estate, we encourage the residents to have a resident association. So there's ownership. So we transfer the estate to them, and they are the ones who will appoint a facilities management. And they run it. I mean, they, they have their own structure, and they make money out of it. So the maintenance of the estate is totally in the 
hands of the residents. Okay. Now, are you planning to go to any other city in Nigeria? Chief, I'm retiring now. I'm tired. <laughs> when was the last time I saw you in England? <laughs> February? It was March. I think I saw you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was here. Yeah, February, March, yeah. Yeah, it was my February March. Yes, but I, I think you look, you see, look good. You can see go on. Yeah, actually, we have a structure. So, and and um, uh, we, we we have a very good structure, and I have quite a young staff. So, so there, there's good transition from 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 myself. You know, um, um, less continuity. Um, uh, I have quite a number of very qualified personnel. Uh, across this sub-region. Sub and um, yes, they will continue. They will continue with my supervision. But 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 for me personally, I mean, I'm, I'm now a social entrepreneur. And everything I do must have a social a social um, um, uh, impl implication. Okay, I, so uh, what are your latest uh, ventures and adventures? Let me put it that way. Well, you know, you know, I mean, Gambia here, um, um, what happened was that we had a change of government. I mean, the government that was here up to 2016 or 2017 um, it was not very friendly to, to some of us with business. And that was one of the reasons why really I, I had to leave. So I went, when in the advent of the new, new government, I had to come back. And today, um, uh, we have a PPP with the Gambia government. Um, um, at the airport, uh, which is the biggest ever private investment in this country. It's a $330 million, you know, special economic zone, wow. 160 hectares within the airport. So that's one thing that we're engaged in. Um, we also, you know, we have, a, we have a vision for the past two years to develop about the Gambia now we're quite doing quite a number of affordable homes, but I'm also involved in a lot of social social work, you know, development, but but really with, with a social um, 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 dimension to it. I mean, as you know, I don't know whether I told you with COVID nineteen, we are funding we are funding and rehabilitating, you know, a center which will be the biggest treatment center in the Gambia. And we are, we are funding it totally. And this is what occupies me. I go there and I spend about 10 hours a day. And this is really where my passion is these days. That look, as an African, you know, if we're successful in business, we need to look at the social dimension. So, so that, that's where I am now. Okay. When I was in the Gambia in January, I think you were partnering with... Uh, well, the reason why we are global is because we have an offshore office in Dubai, you know, uh, and, then, and then obviously, um, uh, I haven't told you, but I'm probably you know, we have um, about, we're operating in about seven African countries. We are registered in seven African countries, but most active in Nigeria, now Gambia, Senegal, you know, these are where we're, this is where we are most active. Um, but the name Global came because one, we want to be identified to be a global global company. So um, um, we have a we have an offshore office in Dubai, um, but then tough Africa because we also want to be identified as an African. That is why our company's name is Tough Africa Global. Okay, can we speak about your foundation? I can see that we've passed our targeted time, but it's okay. Well, my foundation, I mean, um, uh, I started this um, when I was 60. You know, I'm 63 now. You see, I'm three years older than, than the new young man. Huh? Yes, I do. <laughs> um, if I am seen to be successful as an African, you know, we need to give back. So giving back through my foundation, you know, I set it up three years ago. But mainly targeting youth development, you know, helping the youth to develop. And um, I have seven different initiatives. You attended the conference that we organize here in the Gambia, which is annual, bringing together, you know, Gambians of all walks of life, you know, about 1,400 do attend annually. Then I have a startups program also where I have a prize 
you know, for young entrepreneurs between the ages of 18 and 30, put them into competition, and there's a star price of $20,000. You know, first runner-up gets um, $10,000, and then second runner-up gets $5,000. And I have some other consolation prizes. You know, for arms, you know, I give them money, you know, to start up. And anything with youth-related, you know, we have other, other, other initiatives. But these days with COVID-19, I've uh, shifted to health. You know, I'm diverting all the money into health. And how is the situation in the Gambia with the COVID-19? Well, to date, um, uh, we, I think we have one or two who are still admitted. Um, um, we had, about, I think, up to about 10. We had one death. Um, but the others have been treated and discharged. Wow. Yeah. F fantastic. And how is your wife? And your oh, she's fine. She's fine. She's fine. And I'll tell you the good news. One of my daughters, Fatu, I mean, actually is getting married um, uh, on Friday. Oh, uh, wow. But, but it's, a, it's, a, it's a COVID wedding. It's a COVID wedding. So <laughs> we you know, I was supposed to call you. Yeah, this I know. I know, I know. And then this happened. Yes. Yeah, yes. but there are better times ahead. Better times ahead. No problem. No problem. Yeah. Uh, if you ever run into Rebecca and her husband at the butcher's shop, they were, they were very good to me the last time. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you so much. It's been nice talking to you. And uh, we'll speak on phone. Have a lovely Thank you so much. So we'll play you another music. Thank you so much. Thanks for hosting me. Thank you. Mm. The music is coming. Can we have a Gambian music? There should be someone from Gambia we can listen to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love when I go to a deep... <laughs> Yeah, that's Jelly Bar Kuyate, huh? Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. That's great. You go and 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 you go that's nice, lovely, huh? Good treat, huh? Wow, you, you have the, what did you say? I said you have the right steps, uh, although you're sitting, but you know, the way you swing, yeah, you're doing the right stuff. I love your music, you know. You know, I've been in the Gambia so many times now in the last 20 years, so I feel very much at home every time I come. So oh, you're always welcome. You're always welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Good evening. Yes. We'll play the music. You don't, you can leave anytime, but we are still enjoying the music. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I I'm <laughs> 